Hi, this is Dr. Eric Westman with Adapt Your Life, and I'm here with Amy Berger. Thanks for being interviewed today. Sure. At the ADAPT event in Roxboro, North Carolina, the ADAPT North Carolina event, thank you for coming to speak. Uh, there were 350, 60, I, I lost count, people uh, in a uh, church for the ADAPT event. It was pretty great. Now, most people know you for talking about Alzheimer's. You went out into a new field, uh, or maybe it is related even, uh, talking about glucose and insulin levels. So right. insulin levels being something we don't really focus on a whole lot, why should we be concerned about the insulin level? Yeah, um, they definitely are related, the glucose and the insulin and the Alzheimer's for that matter, but there's, without exaggeration, there are millions of people with perfectly normal blood sugar and a perfectly normal even an A1C, but those things are normal because they're being kept in check by very high insulin. And there's a lot of metabolic problems that are driven by the high insulin even when the blood sugar or the glucose is normal. Um, the short list includes PCOS, um, hypertension, gout, cardiovascular disease, erectile dysfunction, uh, you know, the did I say the abdominal obesity? So many things that um, people have no reason to suspect their diet is at play or their lifestyle is at play because, well, I'm not diabetic, my blood sugar's normal, this is normal, but nobody's measuring insulin. And there's, there's a lot of shortcomings with insulin. You can have a fasting insulin test, and just like blood sugar, in a lot of cases, the fasting insulin level will be normal, but if somebody eats, especially if they eat a high carbohydrate meal, that insulin skyrockets and it stays elevated most of the day. It never even comes really back down to baseline before they're having a snack or before they're having their next meal. And it's just such an under-recognized problem because nobody's testing insulin. Yeah, so in the medical field, um, we do this test called a glucose tolerance test. Um, and that you can a uh, add on insulin to the glucose as you measure it, um, what, half hour, an hour, two hours, sometimes you go five hours after drinking 75 grams of sugar, which, uh, you know, now in the low carb keto world, we say who would want to ever do that? Yeah, why do you want to do that anyway? But, but, but this is one way to tease it out. Uh, and then you've done some uh, reading in Dr. Kraft's um, uh, description of the response. That's a, a pretty interesting way to look at it. Uh, can you talk a little bit about Dr. Kraft's Yeah, plans? so I always um, give credit to Ivor Cummins um, for, he goes by the Fat Emperor online, for bringing Dr. Kraft's work back to the spotlight because it's really fascinating stuff. Dr. Kraft is the one who really pioneered discovering the scope of this problem, just how many people had chronically high insulin with no other signs on a, on a routine blood work because the glucose was normal. And so he did several thousand of these oral glucose tolerance tests, extending it to five hours instead of the standard two hours, and he tested insulin instead of just testing glucose. And this is how he found all these people. There was only about, I think, 20%, if I remember, 20% of people had what he deemed a normal response, where the insulin went high, you know, pretty high at 30 minutes, but then it came down quickly and it's normalized. Most other people, the insulin either went very high and came down or went very high and stayed high. Some people, the really, really terribly insulin resistant, most, most of whom will be very obese as well, um, have, have fasting levels that are high. I mean, they wake up in the morning, they're already swimming in insulin. Um, and this is just such an underappreciated issue. You know, with hypertension, we want to look at the blood pressure and give you drugs. Gout, look at uric acid, give you drugs. Cardiovascular disease, give you drugs. But there's one unifying underlying cause that's affecting all of them. And it might not be the only cause. I mean, everything is the human body, you know, I don't know it's that there's one thing. Cause. Yeah, it's a major contributor. And then the link with Alzheimer's is, is uh, I mean, this is kind of scary. It's uh, something going on for years uh, and might actually be a major contributor to something as serious as Alzheimer's. Yeah, and if they, would, if they would test insulin more often in younger people, you might be able to identify people at risk earlier and they could implement changes that would potentially, and I emphasize potentially, ward this off or, or prevent the development of dementia later on. At the ADAPT event, um, I'd have to say this was news to most people. Most people were not aware of the behind the scenes insulin response and people are just focused on the blood glucose or, yeah. or ketone levels. Um, and then there was the question that came up, uh, should they get their 
insulin levels tested? Should they ask their doctors? Well, the that's that's a really good question, and that's uh, kind of controversial, I think, in the keto world. But um, I think it couldn't hurt to get a fasting insulin test because if it's elevated, you know there's a problem. The problem is, if it's not elevated, you may still have a lot of signs and symptoms of chronically high insulin. Like I said, there's a lot of people whose fasting level is normal, but once they eat a meal, it's higher. But there is a confounding factor. If you've already been doing LCHF banting keto for a while, your fasting insulin is probably low. So I don't know that it makes a whole lot of sense to test unless maybe you think you're doing it correctly. You, th you know, why aren't I losing weight? Why are my health problems not improving? Maybe the insulin is still high. So, so uh, as we talked about it, I don't normally measure insulin levels in my patients, but um, if the people are stuck, perhaps um, metformin is a tool, a uh, medication that's relatively low in, in side effects and all. And I know a lot of doctors who use keto also add in metformin to target that high insulin level uh, I don't typically do that. I just tend to reassure people, and but I, I think that's just a don't, great eat point. just don't, eat <laughs> don't eat the carbs. Just don't eat the carbs. Don't eat the metformin. Keep it simple, right? um, but yeah, I, I one thing I want to emphasize too is like all this talk about insulin. M what I talked about in Roxborough was that insulin is not a blood sugar hormone. That's a very, very small piece of what insulin does. So this is why insulin affects the heart and the blood vessels and the kidneys, independent of the blood glucose. I mean, of course, it is the rising blood glucose that makes the insulin rise, so they are you know, intimately connected, but we think of insulin as a blood sugar hormone when it, it does so much more than that. Maybe That's we'll one of the least on, impressive things we'll have you on again does. to talk about in, what different. insulin yeah. does in addition Other to than keeping blood sugar. the blood glucose yeah. down. That's fantastic. Thank you, Amy Berger, for being on Adapt Your Life. Please subscribe below, leave some comments and questions, and until the next time.